Hello, people. Welcome back to the Corgi64 project. It's been a while. Uh, so I've had some time to think and reflect. Uh, part of what I wanted to do with this project is actually uh, illustrate or actually give you an experience of what it's like for me to do my personal projects and my philosophy on doing some of these personal projects. And so one of the things that I have is when you're doing a personal project, you actually have time to experiment and try new things. Uh, so you can, you can have an idea, a rough idea of what you want to do. You can even draft it out like with what I had here. Um, and you, you have an idea and as you start doing things, you can actually figure out what, what works and what doesn't. So as I've worked on this project, I've figured out there may be some better ways to do things and I would like to experiment with that. And so since we have everything in Git, we can always go back. Uh, but I think for this, for this project, I have a few ideas I actually want to try out. And we're going to see uh, if they allow us to work uh, any faster and also allow our project to be a little bit uh, a higher quality. So we've got the design of our, of our CPU. We've got these registers. We've got a program counter and stack pointer and flags and things like that. And we're going to add a little bit more. But, you know, it would be really nice if we had more than, than, than three registers, uh, especially when we start to rate programs. Uh, really, um, the way that uh, compilers uh, work on things, that it, uh, it would actually be nice to have infinite registers, right? So, but for, in reality, we can't do that. But, um, and it starts getting complicated if you have infinite registers. But uh, we would like to have a few more registers. Uh, another thing is uh, looking at the instruction set, right? We're going to add, um, or at least I have plans to add more functionality than what is already listed here. And we're already at something like 40 instructions or something. Uh, but uh, a lot of these uh, instructions really could be collapsed into each other if we just designed our instructions better. So if you look at this, we've got, you know, storing. Uh, you know, an immediate value into register A and B and C. Uh, and really these things could be combined together and we could collapse our instructions and then we'd have less code to write, which would be great. Um, so I have some ideas for, for how we can do our opcodes. And then if we, some, uh, another thing that uh, at least one person had asked about is uh, for the CPU design, uh, or at least the implementation, we've got this uh, opcode table, this jump table of opcodes. And uh, someone said it was uh, either a little bit confusing or they didn't know exactly how it worked and asked me to explain it. Well, I think really for right now, um, uh, the only th reason why I have this op table is for speed, but I'm not actually sure with the modern processors the way that they are if the if it'll process the op table with higher speed than some of the um, traditional methods of dispatch. So I'm thinking about trying out just using a switch statement, which will be a little bit simpler. It'll be easier to understand, and it may be just as fast. And so once we get to a point where we maybe want to try to get more speed out of our system, maybe we'll try an op, uh, a jump table or an op table. But I think switching to a, a switch statement will make things a little bit simpler and easier. And I think overall our code might actually be a little bit uh, shorter. And so we can get rid of all these memory offsets and things like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start uh, working on some of these changes. So if we go to the top of our CPU.h file, you can see, um, let's see, what do we got here? So we've got our CPU. And what we're going to do is uh, uh, hold on to your seats because we're going to make some really drastic changes. We're going to take an i64 and we're going to have our registers and we're going to have, uh, let's try eight registers. So we're going to predefine eight registers. So then we can get rid of our A, B, and C and we'll still have our program counter, stack pointer, and flags. Uh, instead of the instruction register, I think we'll actually get rid of that. 
so we'll get rid of that there. Um, and then the bytes for memory, yeah, we'll just leave it as a pointer to bytes for now. Then what we'll do is we'll go down and uh, let's see. So the next thing that we want to do, oh, let's go up here. So uh, we have this thing called an instruction. It's nine bytes long. We have eight bits for the 64 bit uh, uh, for the value and one byte for the opcode. So here's what I'm thinking for the instruction. I want it to be really simple to read and write instructions from the memory. And um, uh, the way that we can do pointers and everything else, I, I want it to be eight bit or eight, uh, eight byte aligned or 64 bit aligned. So what we're gonna do with the instruction is the instruction is actually just going to be an eight bit, uh, or not an eight bit, but a 64 bit integer. So we'll have uh, instruction it will be, um, let's see, we'll have eight bits for the um, for the opcode. So that will allow us to have 256 opcodes. And then we'll have eight bits for the destination, um, destination uh, register, uh, eight bits for the source register and then we'll have let's see that's 24 bits so we'll have um, I think 48 bits left for a value right so we can have uh, I think that'll be good destination source and then we can have some sort of value is that correct maybe I did my math wrong so let's see 64 minus Oh, so ah, yeah, I did my math a little bit wrong. That'll be 40 bits, 40 bits for the value. Uh, we could actually take away this um, source registering, let's combine them in there. Uh, we'll see, so uh, let's think about that. But anyway, our total instruction will be um, 64 bits total. And so that's that will allow us to read everything in eight byte uh, increments. So let's see, let's take a look at this. Uh, we're going to, um, let's see, should we do this? So the idea is, so I'm gonna take a little bit of time uh, uh, and think about this for a second. So we have our opcode, it allows to have 256 opcodes. Uh, our registers, uh, technically uh, there will be space for our registers for 256 of them, but we're just gonna have eight of them. We, we could actually expand that at any time if we allow, the, allow these to be registers. And then 40-bit value uh, will allow us to have, say, immediate values or, or something of that nature. Um, what we could do is we could have uh, this second part be all together and have it be 48 bits and it could either represent, depending on the opcode, it could represent an, an a it could represent a register or it could represent an immediate value. And I think maybe that might be a better a better thing to do uh, because I don't think in our op, I don't think in our opcodes we'll want to have a destination source and a value. That would just be kind of weird. So let's do, let's make this 48 bits. Let's read that. Uh, source register slash immediate value. No, oh, whoops. Let's see. So, whoops, there we go. So uh, that will be essentially the design of our instruction. So we'll be able to. Let's see, what should we do for that? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take this away for now because we don't want our old instruction. And what we'll do is, let's see, we need to, a lot of this stuff is gonna change. So let's go down to Go down to the bottom. Okay, we've got our CPU that's running. So uh, running is true. While it's running, 
we'll fetch and decode. So we'll actually have a CPU fetch, um, which will increment our counter. And then uh, actually what we'll do is let's write just a simplified thing right now. And then we can break this out into other functions if we want to. So we're gonna have a switch on the Let's actually get our instructions. So we're going to have an I64, which will be our opcode, and that will be some value that we can get. Uh, um, let's just set it to zero for now. Then we'll have an I64. We're going to have our register, um, our source uh, register or actually our destination destination register, which will be zero for right now, and an I64 um, source, uh, and that will be zero. And what we need to do is we're gonna get, uh, let's see, so we're gonna have, how do we do that? Okay, so uh, we're gonna have an instruction I64 instruction, and that will be from our memory, and we'll get at the memory at the program counter. So that gives us an instruction. And so uh, what we're gonna have to do is we'll have to get our opcode, which will be the uh, top eight bits. And so we can get that by shifting our value down by, uh, let's see, oh boy, let's see, there's too many bits. So 64, uh, we're gonna have to shift it down by 56 bits. So let's do that, let's do instruction. And we'll shift it down by 56 bits. Oh, and the other thing that we'll have to do is since Every, uh, our instruction is a signed integer. We're actually gonna convert that to an unsigned integer. Uh, uint uh, 64t. So that way, um, that way if the, if the top bit is set um, and we shift it off to the right, it doesn't copy that bit. Uh, we don't want that to happen. So let's do that. Then we'll do, let's see. Let's see, what do we do? We're gonna move the other one down by 48 bits. So unit 64T instruction moved over by 48 bits. And then oh, we need to have some sort of mask for this. So we're gonna have a mask we're gonna need a couple different masks. So what we're going to do is let's put, let's have our mask be up here near the top. So we'll define, and maybe uh, we may end up doing this differently somewhere else, but let's do, let's define our uh, address mask. And that will be a hexadecimal value of, let's see, we wanna, that's the first byte, uh, second byte, and I think that's that's all we want. So uh, 16 minus 16, yeah, so that'll be good. The rest of the bytes will be, uh, let's see, so we have, uh, was it six bytes? So one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, good. 64-bit stuff is a lot of bytes or a lot of bits. So what this value will do is it will allow us to we can um, we can do a um, bitwise and and that will give us our address value. And this will make sense a little bit later. But uh, the other thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to create. Let's actually create a mask for for our. Um, what is it called? It's our destination value, or let's see, our source value, right? Um, let's see, source, let's see, how do we do that? 
So we have our opcode, our destination register. Okay, so it'll be our destination mask. So let's create dest mask. And what this will have is uh, the first byte um, is the opcode, so we don't want that. We want our destination mask, so there we go. And then the rest of it will be zeros, so that is good, right? So then we can go over here, and uh, what we'll do is actually we can kill this. We can instruction, we'll end it with our destination mask, and then we'll move it over 48 bits. That should be perfect, right? The last one will be our instruction ended with our address mask. And we're calling it an address uh, because most of the time it will probably be an address or an immediate value or something like that. Uh, but that'll be fine. So uh, the other thing that we'll be doing, I guess, inherently with this is we'll only have 48-bit addressing, which is fine though, because uh, in 64-bit computers in Windows, I'm not sure about Linux, but I know in Windows we only have 48-bit addressing for RAM anyway, so that should be fine. Plus, this is a virtual machine. We're not going to be doing a lots of um, uh, lots of huge data sets here, so uh, we're going to limit our, ourselves to 48 bits uh, for addressing. Okay, so we have now we have our instruction, and really we'll we'll put this in. A, uh, this will be actually be kind of a decoding section, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to switch on the opcode, and then this is where we'll have our list of opcodes. And it'll be very similar to what we already have. In fact, I'll probably have to update that file, that text file that has all of our opcodes. So uh, we'll end up having to do that, but for right now we'll have a case and we'll have, um, actually, I guess at the top is where we should define our opcodes first. So let's define our opcodes and we'll have an enumeration uh, another thing I want to do really quick is we'll have uh, standard int.h, right? So uh, we'll have an enumeration, which will be our ops. And this is where we'll enumerate all of our opcodes, right? So uh, to start out, we're going to start out really simple, and then we'll be able to add more as we go along. So we'll start out with just an add opcode and a halt. Actually, we'll just put halt there, right? So that's pretty good. So we've got add and we've got halt. Um, the other one that we'll need uh, is an immediate value. We want to load an immediate value into our register. So we'll we'll um, the mnemonic we'll use for that is LDI. So load immediate value. So uh, with this, we'll be able to write a simple program uh, and test it, right? So that's, that's, uh, this is a large enough, um, a large enough uh, opcode uh, list that we can actually test it. So let's go ahead and create those case. We're going to have LDI. Um, we have to remember to do our break after each uh, case. So we're gonna have an add instruction and we're gonna do, whoops, break and case and halt. And then we'll default with a uh, I don't think we need break after the end of that. We'll default with a uh, printf um, unknown uh, opcode. And we'll write the opcode out. And we'll exit. Okay. 
So this, this will be our loop that, uh, or at least this is our switch statement, and we have our main loop here for our while loop. So let's go ahead and for now, we don't need this opkit table or anything else like that. So this is our main loop. Now let's go ahead and uh, actually implement these things. So instead of having functions for our things, which we could do as well, um, most of these things will be very simple, so uh, we'll be able to do it uh, right here with a single line or so forth. So we're gonna load something. So we're gonna load something into our register, our CPU register, and uh, we're gonna have a destination register and that's going to be from our memory we're going to uh, load in actually no we're loading an immediate value which the immediate value is uh, actually this source thing here so I don't know if we want to call it source we may want to just call it a value but uh, that's pretty good for right now so uh, we'll, we're loading an immediate value that will give us an immediate value so the next thing we'll, we'll do is we want to add two things together. So we're going to have uh, we're going to add uh, the uh, destination register here, right? And we're going to add the destination register with the source register value. So we're going to get register source, and that uh, will add those two things together. And halt, what halt will do is we'll set C running to zero. And that will allow us to, oh, let's um, actually, yeah, let's set it to false because it's a Boolean value. So there we go. That is pretty good. So let's go, um, the other thing that we'll be able to do right now is oh, we're gonna have to fix up some of these things. So let's go up through here. Uh, we're gonna eliminate these opcode tables right now because we don't need those anymore. If this turns out to be a bad experiment, we can always bring them back. Uh, the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the top. And so we have our eight registers, program counter, stack pointer. Okay, the other thing that we have to do is go down to the bottom at the end of our loop, we're going to increment our program counter. Right? And the other thing that we'll have to do is at the top, we'll have to get, oh yes, so we, we've got our instruction, that's good. So let's see, so that should be good for our program counter. The other thing that we'll need to do is when we create our, our new CPU, uh, let's actually, is there a CPU thing? So let's go ahead and get rid of some of these opcodes. So we've got some old opcodes that we need to get rid of. Most of these we'll be able to get rid of. Go through here, jump opcodes, CPU init, there we go. Uh, CPU reset, CPU mem. Run, reset. So I guess we never created a way for us to create a CPU on demand. So we should do that. So if we create the CPU, let's have something where, in fact, let's type Let's type def this, type def the struct, and we'll call it CPU, with a capital C, and then we'll have a CPU where we return it, and we'll say new CPU, and um, yeah, okay. What we'll do is create CPU, pointer to it, and we'll malloc out the size of CPU. Oh yeah, I always forget that um, in C++ we have to do this. Okay, now 
our CPU. Um, actually, here we can init all of our stuff in our CPU. Uh, what we'll do right now, we may we may end up passing in a our memory to hook up our memory. Uh, it's probably what we'll want to do. But for now, let's just uh, allocate some memory. And we'll do size of our byte times, uh, let's just add a thousand bytes for memory. It's pretty small, but uh, let's do 8,000. Something that will be divisible by eight. So that'll be good for now. That'll give us a thousand words of memory, or a thousand eight byte words of memory. Uh, our program counter is gonna be zero. Our stack pointer, okay, our stack should start at the top uh, of our memory, or at least that's how we're gonna design it. So that's gonna be 8,000. We may end up creating a constant for that. Uh, let's see. The other thing, uh, our flags, mm, C flags will be zero. And then we can return our new CPU. So this will allow us to call CPU and create one on demand. Uh, we don't have a fetch right now, so that can go away. Uh, printing the status of our CPU, that's going to be a little bit different uh, later on, so let's just get rid of that. Um, there's, mm, let's, let's not have flags right now. And we're not gonna set the arithmetic flag. And we don't need this init anymore. And let's not have a reset yet. Okay, so this, so now we're down to 66 lines, it's way simpler. And we have something that I think, let's see, this may be good enough to run. Okay, so we have a byte, we have the I64, we have our opcodes, we have our flags. Okay, let's go and test this by going to our, no, let's see, let's go to our source and we'll go to main. And what we'll do is we'll create, uh, we have to create our instructions, right? So let's create a function called make instruction. It will return an I64 and it'll be called make instruction. And we'll give it a I64 op and we'll give it an I64 destination, an I64 <coughs> source. And that. Um, this will output just an, an, a 64-bit integer. And let's see, how do we want to do that? We want to, our opcode has to be at the top byte. So we're going to take whatever that value is. Let's see, let's do I64 instruction. It starts out with zero. Or actually, it starts out being the op. Um, shifted over by 40, no, 56 bits or something like that. Hopefully that's good. Then the uh, next thing that we need, hmm, let's see, okay. Um, okay, yeah, that should be good. Then our instruction will be our instruction. Mm, let's see, actually, how do we want it? Yeah, we'll have our instruction and then we'll or it binary or it with our destination. Let's we'll really shift it over by 48 bits. And then finally, what we'll do is we'll have our source value, which will be our instruction with the source 
And really what we should do is have it um, have our uh, have our source be ended with our address mask. Ah, okay. And this will ensure that our source value can't be bigger than, than 48 bits. So with that, we can return our instruction. And so now we can create any instruction that we want without having to write all of these things by hand here. Uh, that'll be very cool. Um, uh, it'll still be a little bit tedious, which we'll get to work on that. But uh, let's see. So we'll do, ah, so our CPU will be a new, a new CPU. And that will allocate one for us. We don't have to init it anymore. Uh, we can create a bytes for our memory. Our memory will actually be, mm, okay. Uh, actually, how do we want to do this? We'll, we'll create, um, okay, yeah, I know. Let's try this out. So we're gonna create an i64 memory. And what we'll do for our memory is we'll just have a list of these make instructions. Make instruction and we'll load an immediate value to register zero. And we'll load a value of three. We'll make an instruction uh, we'll load an immediate value to register one with the value of four. And then we'll make an instruction. Maybe I should um, maybe I should uh, shorten the name of this. Okay, then what we'll do is we'll add uh, registers z zero and one, and we'll store our answer in register zero. And then we'll make instruction halt. And by default, we give it zero, zero, because it doesn't matter what's gonna be inside that one. So that will give us our 64-bit memory. And then our memory, what we'll do for this is we'll actually, let's see, we should, uh, let's convert it to bytes. Um, and the reason for this, um, the reason why we store our, our memory in bytes, it, it'll be for, Later on, when we want to do stuff with um, when we want to do stuff with audio and pictures and all that stuff, it'll be important to have bytes. So that's the reason why we're not storing it as eight byte, um, sixty four bit values. So there we go. So we'll be able to run our CPU with our program in there, and then we won't have any status. But what we can do in the meantime is print out the value of register one. So, or register zero. And we'll have C uh, register zero. Uh, the other thing that we'll have to do, that, that concludes, I think, our program. We'll have to come back and test that. The other thing that we'll want to do is go back into our CPU.h. And that I, we want to make sure that we actually grab a, a, an eight byte instruction from this. Because remember, our memory is just. Uh, in bytes, right? It's not uh, in eight bits. It's in bytes. So what we what we really need to do is we need to convert this into an i sixty four um, There we go and I nah, I'm not sure if it's necessary, but we'll put we'll put um, We'll put some uh, parentheses around this because really what I want is I want this value to be a 64-bit 64, uh, 64 
uh, pointer and then I can address it, right? So in fact, what may be more readable, and I'm pretty sure the compiler will compile this away, is um, I can actually say, okay, I'm gonna have some memory and I'm gonna convert uh, our C min to a 64-bit value. So then what we can do is, so that way, instead of it being confusing, we can just say, okay, I'm gonna have memory and we're gonna grab an instruction at memory, right? And it's gonna be interpreted as a 64-bit value. The only reason I can do this safely is because everything, all of our values are eight byte aligned. If we try to index into this thing at a non eight bit aligned thing, I think that's undefined uh, undefined behavior. So we, we don't wanna do that. We always want to index uh, into an eight uh, an eight byte alignment uh, if we're gonna read these values as eight bytes. So uh, that may or may not make sense, but uh, uh, it's fine for now. So let's see. So now that we're indexing everything correctly, I think we are, we should be able to run this, hopefully. Uh, so let's see if we can try that. So we still have our build.bat which should work, oh, uh, maybe, let's see. So we've got, uh, we've done a lot of programming, so let's check this out. Uh, CPU undeclared identifier on CPU. So let's look at CPU.h line 43. So run CPU, oh, that's right. It's called CPU now and That'll take care of that problem. So let's try this again and see what else it gives us. Print F format string requires uh, an argument of type int, but Virgo one has um, I64. Oh yes, that's right. So what we should do is let's actually, let's go up here and we're not gonna do using, instead what we're gonna do is, mm, okay. Let's do define, and we're gonna define byte as uint 8t. I think that's the right direction, yeah. So we'll define uh, i64 as int, int 64t. So, yeah, we'll do this the C way, and hopefully that will allow that to go away. Let's do, okay, build that bat. All right, here we go, print format. So it's still I64. Um, let's go to the CPU.h, and it's line 61. And that makes sense. Uh, really, oh, you know what? This is a long value. So um, I think, it's long. Um, as so often, I don't um, I don't work with 64-bit values all that often. So let's go and build. Let's see if that works. So print has um, uh, type long, but has type int uh, 64. Oh yeah, you know what? We can we can do long long value or i64d. Um, i64d I don't think uh, works on Linux, but we'll put it, we'll use it here because we're on Windows. So here we go. So we'll do i64d. So hopefully that will fix that uh, problem. There we go. And then we've got a couple syntax errors. So that's fine. So we'll go to line 25 and 30. So, oh, actually, that was in main, wasn't that? So let's go to source main, uh, 25, make instruction. Oh, you know what? That's right. None of these should have, they should have um, 
semicolon or not semicolons they should have commas instead there we go so that should be a little bit better uh, let's see build okay where are we at now so we've got um, undeclared identifier for main and 30 We're getting almost done so oh I called the CPU uh, let's just call it C that's fine we know it's a CPU and build okay so there we go so we've got bin main.exe and unknown opcode 2 is is what it says that we have so what we'll do is to make sure that it's running our program properly we'll go through here and at the top after we decode we'll put a print statement in here and we'll say okay let's print out our opcode which will be i64d let's print out our destination which will be i64d let's print out our source which is i64d and then we can print out all these things so we've got op whoops we've got op uh, destination source so that way um, let's see we'll do build uh, we'll do oh let's see let's take a look at this uh, format stream requires argument of type int yeah we should probably fix some of these things too uh, let's where's that main 34 so whoops main cpp let's go to 34 and yeah let's fix this so to have an i 6040 there we go so we'll build that's much better we'll do bin main there we go. So now we can see exactly what happens every cycle of our system. So we, uh, we're we doing opcode zero, which is our load, right? So we're loading into register zero a, um, oh, I guess I didn't type that in properly. Let's, let's fix that. Vim CPU, okay. Uh, not I64. For we want percent i64 there we go so now we'll go build um, and then we'll run it then main okay so here we go so we're loading three into register zero we're loading four into register one and now we have an opcode one which is adding uh, the zero and one registers together and then we have uh, an opcode two which should be a halt right if, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, did we not create halt? Uh, perhaps we did not. Uh, oh, it looks like we did. So zero, this would be zero, this would be one, this would be two. Um, at the very top, we've got zero, one, and two. So it should Oh, you know what we did? We forgot break so what what happens is that if we don't put a break at any of our case statements it'll fall through to the next uh, to the next um, case so we'll build we'll go bin main.exe and now our register 0 is 7 so we've added our registers together so that's pretty good um, so let's just do a little bit more. This uh, video is running a little bit longer uh, than normal, but that's okay. We're doing some experiments and we're uh, redesigning some of this stuff. So uh, let's show how uh, much faster this can be. So let's go to our source uh, may, uh, CPU <clears throat> and let's add some more opcodes. So we've got a load immediate value. Oh, that's right, I forgot this is actually a tiny file now. So we've got our load immediate value. Let's add our uh, subtract, multiply, and divide, and maybe mod too, that's pretty good. So add, subtract, multiply, uh, divide, and mod. Uh, and we'll go down here and we'll implement them. So we'll do this, we'll have case. 
uh, sub break case uh, multiply whoops, break case uh, divide case mod and we'll break there and the way that we build these is the same as we do here so let's capture this and um, oh actually we'll paste it in um, actually we'll grab whoops oh uh, there we go so we'll go to here we'll go is that as far as I can go okay so we'll grab this and we'll grab the whole line and then we'll paste it in right divide mod okay so for subtraction, it's very easy. We just replace this with subtraction. Uh, multiplication and division. There we go. And modulus. So let's do the modulus there. And that gives us a mod. So now we've got add, subtract, multiply, uh, divide, and mod. And we can, we can actually test this out really quickly. So let's do source main we can let's see we've added some things together we can do uh, we can multiply so now uh, if you think about it we've got uh, let's see so uh, after we do this add uh, the register zero will have seven so let's do let's make an instruction And we'll load another value into, let's say, register two, and we'll load a five into that. And then we can make an instruction. Let's actually, uh, oh yeah, um, there we go. So we'll, there we go. We'll grab a make instruction and then we'll actually add this over here. So we've got, we'll have another instruction where we want to, let's see, what do we want to do with this one? So we've loaded a five, let's actually subtract. There we go. Uh, so we'll subtract, um, hang on just a second. Um, so we can subtract. Um, let's see, we want to subtract zero and uh, let's see, register two. So um, what that will do is uh, register zero has seven in it, register two has five, so we'll subtract five from seven and we should get two out, I think. Um, <clears throat> then we can uh, create another instruction, uh, we'll load We'll load another instruction into two. We'll say, okay, we're gonna load, um, um, let's see, so add, subtract, multiply. We'll multiply something by eight. And then we'll add another instruction where we'll multiply uh, zero by two. Um, so then we'll have a two and then the two gets multiplied by eight, and that will give us a 16. And then let's see, we'll, whoops, undo. There we go. So then we'll want to load, <clears throat> let's see, into register two, we'll load, we're gonna divide by something. So we'll divide, uh, we'll divide by three. So we'll have 16 uh, divided by three, three, six, nine, 12, 15. So it should be five, that should give us five out. Um, let's see, so we'll, we have to create our division here. So we're gonna test all of these at once. Maybe that's a bad idea, I don't know. Uh, but let's, oops, oops, undo, undo. Uh, let's see. Oh no, I keep, let's see, okay, here we go. Okay, let's fix this. 
uh, make instruction should be there we go oh let's see make instruction aha okay so now we'll take let's see so we'll um, let's see so so now we have a division so okay so we load uh, three and four we add them together right in fact we can put some some uh, comments in here so uh, load three four add three and four um, and then we'll say we're going to add um, we're going to subtract uh, five from seven and we're going to multiply uh, uh, two by eight so that way we understand what we're doing here and then we'll uh, divide um, let's see multiply two by eight that'll give us 16 so uh, divide 16 by three and this we'll have to do let's see zero and two <clears throat> and let's do let's copy those and put those there so then we'll uh, multiply divide and then we'll mod something so if we divide 16 we'll, we've got five if we mod that by say let's see what will give us an interesting number if we uh, mod five by uh, from two, four. Oh, that's modded by two. So that should give us a one at the very end, right? So we'll load, we'll load a two, and then we'll uh, mod. So after all of this, we should get a one at the very end. So hopefully we'll see a one. So if we don't see a one, then there's some sort of uh, mistake somewhere. So they'll go build, build.bat, bin main.exe, and we have a one at the end. So now we've tested all of those things. We've added all of those instructions. So vim source CPU. So we've already got a load, add, subtract, multiply, divide, mod, and a halt instruction. So you can see how this is very simple. So we don't have to worry about updating a table or a memory table and worry about keeping all of those 256 values in check. <clears throat> it's all very easy. And we can also have, we can load things to our eight different uh, registers, right? So we don't have to have a have a separate instruction for loading to register A and, the, and then an instruction for loading to register B. Uh, instead, our registers are numbered, and we can have a single instruction that can load to any of those registers. So that allows us to have a much more compact, um, compact structure. So I think that is good for now. We're we're up to almost an hour. Uh, so next week we'll be able to get uh, a lot more instructions here. And I think what I'll do is I'll take some time and update the documentation for for the instruction so we can have something to look at for the the actual design of the project so thank you for watching uh, till next time